All right, guys, um, you can see that I have prepared a few drawings for this lesson focusing on the style of Peter Max that we talked about. Use of sunbursts and peace signs, uh, American pride, themes of love and positivity. And I've gone ahead and just on some cardstock, which is a little bit heavier paper, I drew in my designs out with just a number two pencil. So anything that you have, a little bit thicker paper is better, but if you don't have it, just regular printer paper will work. And then I got um, two different options for you. So depending on what you are comfortable using, you can either use do this project using um, crayon, where you can use black and white crayons to create a resist with your watercolors, or if mom and dad are okay with it, uh, a black Sharpie is a really great, um, great thing to create some contrast in those big bold outlines of Peter Max's. And then I have a variety of different watercolors that I just had here at my house, both mine and my son's, and a few different brushes. I got some round brushes, some flat brushes, um, things that'll help me to fill in my design as I work. And again, whenever you're working with watercolor, you're going to need to have a cup of water to be able to mix your, your colors with. So that's um, the setup that you're going to need, and then it's your choice. I'll go ahead and show you the next step. Alright guys, so I've gone ahead and done the next step off camera, which was using what was left of my little black crayon here to go ahead and outline the flag design that I made. Um, I pressed really hard trying to build up a nice waxy layer. If you can see it's pretty dark on there. And I've decided to go ahead and use my white crayon and I'm going to just kind of rough in real quick the white uh, stripes of the flag. And I also decided to kind of leave my edges open, but you could do it any way you want. So obviously you don't necessarily need to do a flag at all, but um, however you choose to do yours. Remember, this is all about painting what makes us happy. So I'm using some of those things that are in Peter Max's art, but I'm also just drawing what, what brings me joy today. So go ahead um, and if you want to use a crayon, you can outline it all. And this is our last step before we paint. Also make sure that you take a chance to, or take the the time to go back with an eraser and erase any of your pencil lines that weren't covered up by the colored pencil. That's just going to make it look a little bit neater when it's done. So now that my resist is all set up, I'm going to go ahead and start putting in colors. If you've never used pan watercolors before, just know that the first thing you need to do is wet your brush. You don't want to ever stick a wet or a dry brush into the paint. And you also don't want to pour water directly into the paint itself. So just get your brush kind of damp, some excess water on it, and then you can go right into your color. What you're looking for is you don't want it to be so runny that your paint kind of um, spreads everywhere. You want it to kind of pull back to itself when you make a, a stroke on the plastic, right? See how the, the paint is pulling back together. And that's really the consistency you're looking for. Once you got that, guys, you're ready to start painting. So go ahead, pop in the colors you like. Remember that Peter Max loved using those contrasting colors of really, really cool and dark colors right next to really warm and bright colors and you know depending on what time period you're looking at sometimes he was really messy and sometimes he was really neat so you really can't go wrong with whatever you choose to do here all right i'm gonna let you guys go and explore with your color and i can't wait to see what you get so as you guys can see, I've started putting in my colors here and really working in the same way that Peter Max does where he might blend one color into the next and, and not really worrying about cleaning my brushes between going in my pink and purple paints. But now when I switch to yellow, this is really important. You need to clean your brush if you're going to switch between colors that are, are very contrasting like that. So when I want to clean my brush, I swirl it around in the paint and then I find it best to have a paper towel or an old rag, something that you can just take your brush and dry it off after you're done so that now you know none of that color is left in that brush before you dip in the next color. So guys, here is my finished product. It uh, still needs time to dry, but as you can see, I really tried to have a little fun with the color, try to put my warm yellows and oranges right next to my cool blues and my purples. Um, 
thinking about balance, if I had pink up here, I brought a little pink down to the bottom. If I had blue over here, I tried to bring blue up to the top. So again, I hope you had fun doing this and I miss my students just as much as I know you guys miss school and I would love to see the art that you guys have made from this project. So please take a second, take a picture, try to send me an email with it and I'd love to give you some feedback and just celebrate your art that you're making today. Thanks. Okay guys, I did want to give some of you another option for this project. If you would like to work with a permanent marker, I only have this really big one at my house right now, but I think we're all trying to make do with the supplies we have. So if you don't want to do yours with a crayon resist and you want to do something maybe a little bit uh, more contrasty, a little bit more like his later work, you might want to try it this way. So I've got my line drawing in, again focusing on all of those style trends we talked about, the rays of light, the unity and peace and love and positivity in the theme. You see the peace symbol as the sun is coming up over the horizon. These are supposed to be mountains. Um, simple shapes, but really coming together to send a positive message. So I've sketched this out onto my paper, again using a, a heavy cardstock, but whatever kind of paper you have will work. Um, if you are using just printer paper and you choose to do it with a sharpie, I would probably put something underneath my paper like some scrap paper or old newsprint, something so that the sharpie doesn't bleed in onto your, your table at home there. So I'm going to take a second now to go ahead and outline everything with my sharpie and erase all my pencil marks. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just finished up the next step, which was using my Sharpie to outline my drawing, and then I used an eraser to clean up all the lines. So I really tried to make it as smooth as possible. And now I am going to attack it with my watercolor. So I have my pink cup here, although, or sorry, water cup, although once it starts looking this colored, I suggest dumping it out and getting some fresh water. I've got a rag over here to clean off my brush in between colors and just a variety of watercolors that I have. So now I'm going to focus on all of those things that Peter Max was doing using those bright bold colors, really trying to blend between colors, transition and fade from one color to the next and also putting some unexpected colors next to each other. Some bright warm colors next to some deep intense cool colors and see if I can really make this pop. All right, see you in just a few minutes. So this is the final product. I uh, tried to have a little fun with blending my yellows and oranges and reds together and then even trying to transition up into a nice purple here at the top, getting those warm and cool colors right next to each other, blending in some blues and, and purples down at the bottom and kind of breaking out of the frame a little bit. So hopefully you've had a lot of fun with this. Again, I cannot wait to see what you've come up with and just remember that when things get tough, the best thing you can do is choose positivity. Take a little example from Peter Max and let's spread some joy. Bye guys.